So my beautiful people, I am back and today we're going to talk about Don Like Tuesday Human where I'll bring you 20 plus things you need to know about this game. So let's go. How's it going guys? My name's DPG and if you do enjoy the video, leaving a like really helps out and if you like what you see and want to see more, be sure to subscribe. So Dying Light 2. You're obviously here because you're interested in this game like us all and I personally cannot wait for this thing. It's definitely my kind of game and today I'll bring you 20 plus things you need to know about it. Okay, so this is a game I will 100% be covering on my channel. So if you followed me in the past for previous guides, expect no different from this game, which does arrive February 4th, so not too far away whatsoever. Under a month, people, I can't wait. Okay, so let's get into the details. Okay, so the main story takes place 15 years after the original. So 15 whole years has passed by, people. And oh shit, has got even crazier. Now, Techland have said that the game will take 500 hours to fully complete. That's the main story and the side missions. I mean, 500 hours? That's a little optimistic in my opinion. I've seen a few other official sources state that the main campaign is around 20 hours long, depending on choices you make. And the side missions will be probably plus another 60 hours, so 80 in total, which is a little more realistic and but still incredible still incredible people so the character we will be playing within the game is a guy called aiden coldwell pretty cool and he looks like a what a badass now the city and the explorable area within dying light 2 is said to be four times bigger than the first and the first one i remember being not too small if i'm honest so this one's going to be utterly massive and we do know as usual there's multiple layers to this you can go on the ground them zombie nests you can obviously we've got the parkour uh, you can like loot and scout buildings find those materials this that, and the other so yeah it's going to be a pretty big place to discover that's for sure now we know within the city uh most people that are left have moved to the rooftops which is a smart move when when ground zero is basically infested with zombies especially at night Aha, craziness so this, this leads me to believe, and we actually know this through confirmation from Techland, that the parkour system is way more sophisticated in this game. With thousands of new animations, new gadgets, zip lines, you know, you, you name it people, it's all here. Grapple hooks, parachutes it seems, paragliders maybe. We saw a guy in the trailer, I think he's paragliding. It could be a parachute, you can't really see it. But my man's flying somewhere. He's using rooftop air vents to make him fly up higher, which looks pretty cool. So we know the, the parkour system and the way you can traverse this city is going to be way more sophisticated than it was in Dying Light 1, which I cannot wait for. Now, within the city, there are three main factions. So we have the survivors who are said to be just regular civilians, a friendly bunch, a peaceful bunch because of these people, their, their power within the city, their weaponry is limited. Remember that. We then have the peacekeepers who are like a military group. These believe in keeping that law and order. And because of this guys, you know, they are backed by a ton of firepower. And then we have the renegades who are basically a group of savages, ex-convicts, bandits, looters, my kind of people. Mm. Well, who are you choosing people? We have the survivors, the uh, peacekeepers and the renegade. Who are you picking? Who are you picking? They can actually help these uh, factions and gain allegiance with them and depending on which you do, which you help, which you choose to side with, will obviously have consequences on the way you play the game. Some good and some bad. Now these consequences may be as big as gaining or losing access to certain parts of the city. We may see main story characters dying and much much more which will then go on to affect the game on a bigger scale. Now there's more than just humans you need to worry about within dying light because we have zombies and zombies are at the top of the fuck you up chain. Now zombies nest in and around that ground level. And this game sees, I believe, all zombie types return from Dying Light 1. 
but there are new variants which I've covered in a previous Dying Light video. If you do want to check that out, you'll find it on my channel. Some scary looking mole followers for sure. But let's just say, as we know, zombies try to murder you. They want to eat you. So you can either run and get the heck out of there, or you can stay and fight like a boss. Now Dying Light 2 will include skill trees. And from what we know of so far, what we've seen within a few gameplay trailers and sneak previews, there I think there's two sections to skill trees. We have the combat section and we have the parkour section. So it is basically the case of stand and fight or run like a bitch. What are you gonna do, people? What are you gonna do? Now, when it comes to combat within a game, if you do decide to stand and fight, it's said there are over 200 weapons within the game, which you can combine, creating some epic shiz. Now, guns are in the game, but are seemingly scarce and pretty rare, which isn't a bad thing in my opinion. Weapon degrading will return. So you have to keep in mind that weapon repair cost and you don't want that weapon breaking in the middle of a battle because you will be in serious trouble. So it's something you have to keep an eye out on. Now this is a system I know a lot of people ain't too keen on, a lot of people ain't a fan of, but I think Dying Light didn't do a bad job in Dying Light 1. I think they'll probably get the system done better in Dying Light 2. But we will see people, we will see. But it's definitely one where some people just ain't sure about it. But I don't mind it honestly as long as it's implemented right and it seems as though it may just be that case. Okay so to end Techland have confirmed this game will receive 5 years worth of updates. We know there's 2 DLCs already but they plan on keeping, their, keep, keeping the game good for 5 years. I mean they did the same with the first game, I mean Dying Light still a pretty popular game. Techland know their shit and will keep on top of things, you mark my words. Now the game will support co-op but at launch there's no cross play or cross gen as far as I'm aware. So if you're playing on an Xbox Series X and your friends playing on an Xbox One X, you can't play together. If you're playing on an Xbox and your friends playing on a PlayStation or PC, you can't play together at launch. But I think it's something they're definitely looking to incorporate into the game at a future date. So we will see people, we will see, and there we have it. We have come to the end of the video. If you guys enjoyed it, leaving a like really helps out. If you're new around here and want to see more Dying Light, because this is a game I'm definitely covering on my channel, be sure to subscribe, and hopefully people, I will see you on that next.